Hello and welcome back to part 2 of designing a 3D printable mini ITX PC case. In this part I'll go through the process of making the cover for the inner chassis I made in part 1. So if you haven't checked that out yet, it will be linked in the description below. Now let's get started. I start by taking measurements of the width and length of the inner chassis. This way I know how big the inside of the cover must be. Then I make a rectangle of those dimensions on top of the chassis and extrude it to a thickness of 3 mm. Next I extrude all four edges out by 4 mm in each direction. Because my walls are going to be 3 mm thick, I now have 1 mm of clearance between the wall and the chassis. Using the offset tool I make an inner rectangle 3 mm from the edge and extrude it all the way down until it aligns with the bottom of the case. In the back of the case I need to make room for the IO shield and all the cables so I simply make a 10 mm edge all the way around except for the lower part which stays open allowing the case to slide onto the chassis. Now that the basic shape of the cover is in place, I can start working on the ventilation holes. What I do here is measure the length and height of the case to decide how big my ventilation mesh is going to be. I will make the ventilation mesh out of 20 by 20 mm squares just like I did in part 1. So I take my measurements and round them down to a suitable size that can be divided into 20s in both directions to create a square or rectangular opening with those new dimensions. In my SketchUp file I have included a few different patterns for ventilation holes. The patterns are set up in such a way that if I edit any one of the squares they all will change because they are all just copies of the same main components for each pattern. It's also very easy to create a completely new pattern. Simply create a square of any size, give it some thickness, I usually use about 3 mm of thickness. Then I can add a texture or pattern to the square. For example, what I'm making here is very similar to those patterns I used in my first two case builds that you're free to check out on my channel if you want. Now I can save it as a component and copy paste as many copies as I need to make the required size for my panel. And any modifications will be synchronized between all the components as long as it's made into a component before copying. When the choice of ventilation pattern is decided, I can now simply copy and paste it into the opening I made in the side of the case. Now I can remove all the excess squares and this side is finished for now. Moving to the front of the case, the process is very similar. I measure the height and the width and do the math to make a properly sized rectangle also dividable by 20 in each direction that I insert the ventilation pattern into. The other large side shares identical measurements to the first side. This time I can just copy the entire ventilation panel, flip it and move it into place. The last place to add ventilation holes is to the top. Here I used the same width as the front and the same length as the side to create the opening which in this case turns out to be the exact same dimensions as the front air intake mesh. So here I can actually just copy the entire front mesh and place it into the opening. You may remember from part 1 that I did all the cleanup work around the air intake. It turns out that all that cleanup is not necessary when the squares are still set as components. <laughs> 
Now that the ventilation holes are in place, we need some way of attaching the case to the chassis and right now the mounting holes are below the edge of the case, so I'll extrude the bottom edge another 8mm down. What happens now is that I'm blocking almost all of the airflow in the bottom intake. To fix this I need to make some cutouts in the cover between the feet on the sides and one in the front as well. I leave about 20mm of space next to each screw hole on the feet to make sure the mount is strong enough. Then I make a similar cutout in the front as well and on the other side to complete the look. Next thing now is to create the actual screw holes. By hiding the two faces of the cover I can now reveal the screw hole behind on the chassis and I can now easily measure the exact placement of the hole. Then I can unhide my cover faces and add the holes in the correct spot. I make two circles. One inner for the screw to go through and a bigger one for the screw head to sink slightly into. Then I repeat this for all four points. Once the holes are in place, it's just one last thing to do. Add a hole for the power button. The easiest way to add a button in a setup like this is simply by making a square matching the size of the rest and adding the mounting hole. Then I make it into its own component and just replace one of the ventilation squares. This hole is 13mm which should work well for a 12mm push button. Finally the cover is complete and it's a good idea to just save the cover as its own group just to keep it separated from the chassis. Now I can export the STL and send it to the slicer. After it's been sliced I always double check if there are any errors, which in this case there is not so this is ready to go to the printer. Unfortunately again, my printer mainboard has not arrived so I am not able to actually print this case. I will upload the SketchUp file and the STLs to Thingiverse linked in the description below. Though remember that I haven't been able to test print this so I cannot promise that everything works exactly as intended. Feel free to try if you want. There are a lot of ways to design a PC case and this is just the way that I personally go about designing. So. I got a lot of requests from people wanting me to show off my design process so I hope that these two videos taught you something or at least gave you a little bit of inspiration to how you want to be designing your own case one day. If you enjoyed the video feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video.